Okay, let us discuss this concept of fall of a chain onto a table. So let me make a table and a chain. So you have a so this is my table, let us say. And there is a chain. So let me make the links of chain. So this is the chain. So let us say this is the chain. Initially the one end of the chain is just touching this table and other end is in the vertical somebody just pulling this chain. Somebody just holding this chain and let us say length of this chain is L. So length of the chain is L. Mass of the chain is also given to you. So let us say mass of the chain is M. Are you getting? So length of the chain mass of the chain. So you can also find mass per unit of length. Mass per unit length. Mass per unit length will be so m by <laughs> l because the for l length mass is m. So mass per unit length will be m by l. Now the question says find out the normal reaction by the table as a function of chain height that is come onto the table. So let us say we have to find out normal reaction as a function of x. So let us say what is I have to find normal reaction as a function of x. What is x? x is the length of chain length of chain resting over the table resting over table. So what we are doing is initially somebody is holding the chain now he leaves the chain. So what will happen you have chain is here now he leaves the chain what will happen this will come down you are just holding the chain up this is a vertical plane now you leave the chain it will go down. So it will come down what will happen at some point of time you will have something like this situation will be something like this and some part of the chain is now hanging over this. So you see some part of the chain is hanging over this table. Are you getting or not? So there will be a pile of chain over this table. Let us say this length has basically the fallen length is x. So this part that is a fallen is x. So this means this is also x because x length has been fallen. So this length is x. What is this length? This length will be L minus X. Are you getting? So X length of chain has fallen. So you can say X length has fallen over the table. Now let us say uh, what is the mass of chain that is just resting on the table? length is x, mass per unit length is m by l. So mass of the chain is m by l into x. So beta of chain beta of chain resting over so this is beta resting over table so this will be m by l is the mass per unit length x is the length of chain that is resting and I have to multiply by g because I need bit. So this is the bit that is just resting over the chain. Now let us come to the second part of the question. Now you see let us say in dt time what is the length of chain that is going to uh, keep on the table. So let us say velocity of this chain is v at any point. So this is a free fall. So chain is freely falling. So velocity of chain is v. So in dt time. So let me make another diagram. So that things become slightly easy. So this is the initial situation and now this is the x length is fallen. Now this time velocity of the chain is v. 
each part will have same velocity because each part has fallen by distance x you see this point the lowest point has gone by x distance this so each part of the chain has fallen by distance x so this means each link will have same velocity are you getting or not and velocity will be under root 2 gx because velocity is given by so this has fallen by distance all all links are freely falling so you can say all links are freely falling and basically all links has fallen the distance x you can verify yourself so the top has fallen distance x bottom has fallen distance x this has fallen distance x so all links has all links have moved the distance x so what will be the if they have moved the distance x so let us the velocity v velocity will be under root 2 gx because each link has fallen by distance x now you know if you if you have a object in the air and if this is going downward with zero velocity if i travel distance x so this distance is x you can apply v square na distance x so v square minus u square is equals to 2s so v square minus u square is equals to 2gx because free fall so v is under root 2gx are you getting or not everybody know this result now let us say this means chain is falling with velocity v each link is falling with velocity v let us consider a time a small dt in dt time what is the length of chain that is going to come over this table so velocity is v and time is dt so that v into dt part of the chain is going to come over this table in dt time so i can say are you getting or not in dt time v into dt length of chain length of chain is going to come is going to come is going to rest over the table are getting now what is the momentum of this small part of the chain can anybody tell me what is the momentum so so length is v into dt that is going to rest coming into rest what is the mass so mass of this will be so mass of v dt part mass of v dt part that the small part so are you getting or not so you have i think you have written the top one please write fast so mass of v dt part will be m by l is the mass per unit length into v into dt now you see what is happening you have so v dt part is now in air just in air after time dt now they are resting over this so this is the v dt part and this is again v dt part are you getting or not so this is the v v v dt part this now initially this has a velocity v this is falling with velocity v and now they are resting on the table so the initial velocity final velocity is basically zero so what is the momentum change so let me write a uh, v dt part has a mass m by l so i can write what is the momentum of this so v dt part initial momentum of v dt part is so i can say initial momentum initial momentum of v dt this will be mass into velocity mass is m by l into v into dt so this is the mass are you getting or not mass into velocity this is v so this is m v square by l into dt so m v square by l into dt what is the final momentum everybody knows so final momentum of v dt will be zero are you getting so what is the momentum change so momentum change in dt time so i can write equation momentum change in dt time this will be m v square by l into dt are you getting 
So what is the force? So force is dp by dt. So this force will be mv square by L dt by dt. So this will be simply mv square by L. So this is the force acting on the chain and the same force will act by applying Newton's third law. So you can say this is the force, so this is my chain that is resting. So this is the force that is mv square by L that is acting on the chain because momentum has changed. Same force will act on the table that is mv square by L. And V I know V is under root 2 Z X. So I can put these values. So so M V square by L is nothing but M V is under root 2 Z X. So V square is 2 Z X by L. So this is the force that is acting. Are you getting or not? Now you see what is the total force on the table. So let me write total force on table. Total force on table. So you see now table already contains x links, x part is already there and due to that x part I have already calculated bit will be m by l into x into z and now the second is this link that is coming down is applying a force because of the momentum loss this is applying a force m by l into 2x into z. So this falling part that is just going to be falling is applying a force of m by l into 2x into z. Let us copy this one. Now you see I can basically break into two parts though this is the force that by the resting so force by resting chain force by resting chain resting chain this force is equals to m by l into x into z and force by falling chain that the last link that is going to collide with the table so force by colliding chain I can say force by falling chain or you can say just colliding link force by colliding link this is m by l into 2x into z so you see the resting chain has m by l into x into z but the colliding chain has two times the mass two times the force so this means that colliding chain colliding link is applying two times the force that already you have over this table. This is a very important result. So what is the total force? So total force I can say. So total force is 2m uh, 3m by L into x into z. And now this is valid only if x is less than L. So this situation is valid if x is less than L. This means chain has just fallen. So so this is something like so chain is falling so you have something like this chain is falling somewhere you will have something like this situation after some time you will have this situation after some time this situation finally this situation now after this there is no chain that will collide no link that is going to collide now the mass will so total mass is resting over the chain uh, table so this is the total chain now here is a from a hip over this table so mass of the chain is m and the force is m into z so after length L that has been fallen over the table, the force applied is mz. Before that, force is given by this function. So now I can make a function. So force will basically, so force over the table will be 3m by L into x into z if x is less than L. Are you getting or not? And after that we will have mz if x is basically greater than L. This means if... Uh, a chain has completely fallen over the table. So if x is less than L, this means, this physically means chain has fallen. Chain is resting over the table. Are you getting? Now I can plot a graph. So let us say plot a graph for this function. So this side I have length of chain that is fallen. 
so length of chain resting over table resting over table and this side will have force on table force on table so you see you have force is a linear 3m by l into x so initially force will increase and when x becomes l suddenly so when x is equals to l so this is a point x is equals to l now this force is at x equals to l you will have from here you will have 3mg so this value is 3mg but now just after just greater than x is equals to l now the force becomes x equals to mg so this is this point is mg are you getting so this is the graph you will have so initially the force will increase after some time the force will when the all length has fallen x is equals to l and that point of time your graph will be a straight line so initially the force on the table will vary so this means if i want to make a table i have to and i am basically following a chain and then i have to test the strength of a table when i am following the chain it's not sufficient let us say uh, i have a table and i am following something from the roof let us say i have some stones that i am following from the roof let us remove this chain part and let us say a uh, uh, stone now my height of the building is um, let us say 10 meter i want to test whether my table will sustain the all the loads or not so i can i uh, can i just test i will put all the stones on the table and can i see uh, whether the uh, whether the table crushes or not so that will be enough information or not not in this case we have to test basically falling falling a uh, stones because falling a stones will apply more force than the resting a stones so if i my experiment is to test whether the uh, table will survive or not in the presence of falling a stone so it will be not just enough just by uh, keeping the stones uh, static on the table and looking whether the table is survive or not table is not going to survive or not i have to basically see i have to do an experiment i have to keep falling all the stones on the table and then see whether the table survives or not or other way around you can do another thing you just take a table and you put the mass so if you need a uh, mg stones you want you want to fall mg stones and you want to test whether this table will survive or not so what do you do you take 3 mg of stones and keep resting because you cannot apply a force that is greater than 3 mg the maximum force applied in this situation if you are if you are falling a stones of mass mg and you want to see whether the table will survive or not then in that case if you don't want to do a experiment of falling a stones because you are you are afraid that maybe table gets broken or maybe something sometime you cannot go to the roof with all the uh, stones so what can you do is you just put a 3 mg mass of the stones over the table and you see whether the table survives or not so you have to keep three times of mg that is the most important point in this question falling the stones apply a force 3 mg than the resting the stones apply only force mg so falling the stones will apply a force three times maximum force that the three times that the resting a stone if resting a stone supply a force only mg resting chain apply a force only mg then falling chain will apply a maximum force of 3 mg are you getting so this is an important problem we'll discuss the next problem so let us go for the next problem